Hello from me, TC and cameraman Andy Davis. We recently sat down with club legend Danny Kerman and we chatted to him about his playing career. I started off by asking Kermo how a lad from Charleston started playing his junior rugby at Stanley Rangers near Wakefield. So, uh, unfortunately, at the time when I first started playing amateur, uh, there were no junior set up at Charleston. Um, and my older cousin, um, he played in the year above me at Stanley, so I ended up sort of tagging along with him. Um, and I just stayed there right through, really. So, um, Charleston and Crofton ended up getting amateur teams as I went to high school, but because I'd already had sort of a, a good period of time at Stanley, I stayed there. So um, it was quite fun really, because then Wakefield Cup finals and things like that, I ended up playing against a lot of my friends who, at that time then played for sort of Crofton and stuff. So all my high school mates and it was quite competitive, but I had a really good time at Stanley. Started at sort of age six and played right through to under 18s there. Had some great coaches along the way. Um, people like Mick Robinson, um, my old man taught me and coached me a little bit there, which were, a bit different and hard at times and then um, I ended up being coached by Ryan Hudson and Jamie Field so that was a good experience and then I sort of went on to play professionally with both of them so it was a good sort of um, transition period and experience to work with them before I went to play with them full time as well. And you were signed as a professional by Featherstone Rovers but in those days Danny you were a centre or winger? Yeah, so um, I'd never really played in the forwards too much, so I played centre predominantly um, through my sort of youth rugby league. Um, and yeah, Feverson sort of offered me a deal um, at under 18s. I'd been picked to play for Bala and Tour Australia, so we went there for four weeks, and Feverson sort of said, Look, when you come back, we'd like you to come on board. Um, so again, really good experience. Uh, my dad's from Featherston and my grandma, she was a, a massive Fever Rovers fan and used to go watch them quite a bit as a kid with them. So it was an amazing opportunity for me really. Um, Gary Price, the coach at the time, who obviously played for Wakefield, um, you know, I spoke to him quite a bit about going and it, just the opportunity really was something that I, I jumped to. It was really exciting for me at the time. You must have had a massive contribution in your first season at Fev. You were relegated. I know, yeah. It was um, it was definitely a baptism of fire. And um, that championship at the time were a really tough division. I remember sort of playing against Hull KR, and they they were a really good team at the time. Um, and it was just a, a massive sort of shock for me, really, in, in terms of going from playing amateur sort of age limit rugby to jumping straight into the first time in a, a really competitive championship season. Um, I sort of obviously been playing centre mainly for Stanley um, but Matty Ray at the time uh, was well, the winger at um, Featherston and he sort of transferred there from Wakefield and he'd done his ACL uh, so he ended up missing the, the majority of the season so I got quite a few games in. In 2007 Danny you were Featherston's leading try scorer playing then in the three quarters so when did the transition to the back row become? Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was quite an abrupt one really, so um, I signed for Huddersfield from Featherstone, um, played one game in the friendlies against Hull FC and I came off the bench on the wing, um, it was sort of a Friday night game um, and Adam Dykes, the Aussie halfback, sort of put a few spiral bombs up when I'd come on after 60 minutes, obviously not the ideal sort of place, you want to be sat on the bench as a winger and then come on and, and got bombed a few times and dropped a couple and it was after that really I had a chat with John Sharp and he, he said, oh, I can see you playing a lot of back row really. And he actually said, I reminded him a bit of Lee Gilmore, um, a bit of foot speed and some similar sort of body. Um, and having played with Gilly, I don't know if that's a, a bit of a negative, having the same body as him, but um, obviously Gilly were a great player and um, you know, sort of to have that aspiration to be, be someone like him were, were one that I really look forward to. And, it was a great change. It took a while to sort of bed in as a back rower. Obviously, it's a, a lot different to playing on the wing. Um, and I actually spent a bit of time playing in the reserves um, getting used to that. But the club gave me plenty of time and no pressure. And ended up playing quite a few games in the middle and the back row at the back, back end of that first season. So you're at the Huddersfield Giants. You've transitioned into the back row. And what should have been the highlight of your playing career? Challenge Cup final when the Giants got to Wembley. But not for Danny Kermond. No, um, that, that was a devastating time, um, it, it was so hard to take, I think as a kid all you ever dream about really is playing in the Challenge Cup final, obviously 
when we were younger as well the grand final wasn't really a thing so it was all when we were playing out as cousins and with my brother and things like that it would always sort of you know challenge cup final it's uh, you know wakey wigan fev wigan something like that and they're the games that you really look forward to and i think arthur charleston had bought tickets uh, to travel down and the week before we played St. Helens at Nosley Road and um, we'd rested a few players but Brownie had sort of said to me, oh, I want you to play in this game but you, you're sort of in for next week, you've earned a shot. So I just took a carry, did a little sidestep and uh, you know fell over in a heap. Um, I think Kieran Cunningham sort of levelled me after when I was on the floor as well. Um, but yeah, I knew something weren't right straight away and unfortunately I'd ruptured my ACL um, so it was sort of a six, nine month injury and you know, that, that dream had gone. But to be honest, the, the club were great with me, Nathan Brown especially, um, took me down with the, with all the, the sort of playing squad, uh, looked after me as if I were playing and he did make it a, as good of an experience as it could have been. But definitely the, the worst time in my career, that. In 2010, you came to Trinity on loan short period but then in 2012 he came permanently and basically Danny you never looked back did you? I didn't know and um, I think that could have gone uh, one of two ways really when I when I did get the opportunity to come uh, obviously it was quite disappointing at the time to sort of you know be told by Huddersfield that I wasn't needed and um, you know they were looking elsewhere but again I'd, I'd say about Nathan Brown at the time he, he was very open and honest and he made it very easy for me and he, he said look I've, I've sort of got you a deal at Wakefield if you want to go there and obviously being from here it, it was another opportunity that I jumped to and jumped to it in the right way um, to work with Richard Agar was, was something that I really looked forward to and I genuinely loved every minute of playing here you know there's been some some great challenges along the way and probably some challenges where a lot of people would have given in and, and stepped away but I really found a, a sort of a love for the challenge um, as much of it as anything and just fa I just found sort of enjoyment in all of it whether that be sort of making people feel welcome when they came in from you know Australia and further afield and, and also playing and representing my home city as well was something that I uh, felt massively honoured to do. You're made captain and you captain Trinity over 150 times how proud were you of that achievement? Oh massively um, Again, something that I'd never really done before, um, sort of being a captain or even in a leadership role, um, but the sort of belief that Rich gave me that, that I was the right person to do that, it kind of made me stronger inside that. And that's something that Rich was really good at, improving people, not just as players, but as people as well. And and the captaincy were, were a big part of that. Um, again, I, I've always had a massive pride in representing Wakefield. Wakefield is something that means a lot to me. Um, it's the place where all my family's from. And, um, you know, to be the captain of the team and, you know, you look at the history of the club and the players that have had the, the sort of privilege of doing that before, to be amongst them, I think it really matters that you represent you, yourself and the club in the right way and it's something that I really thrived on. The million pound game down here against Bradford, you were the captain. What can you remember about that game? It was whether we stayed in Super League or were relegated. Yeah, um, oof, again, a very stressful time that um, career wise um, and, you know, uh, just life in general. It, it made it all very stressful. I think a lot of us, there were no sort of guaranteed answer of what would be happening if we did go down so there were a lot of jeopardy around that game obviously there were sort of events around the club that had happened around that time as well which kind of made it even more turbulent um, and I'd been out injured at the time so I had a shoulder operation um, and we're meant to be out till the end of the year uh, but obviously the time times were, were um, you know, we were kind of rushed and I needed to get back for those games. So we played uh, Sheffield away, I think, the week before, um, Bramall Lane. And we got beat by them. Um, who, I don't think they'd won a game in that middle eights. Uh, so, again, leading into that game, the, it was sort of very stressful. Can't remember too much about the game, but other than sort of the early try that I got and then Scott Moore's try at the end and they missed the conversion. And just the sort of feeling at the end of the game, it was kind of... There wasn't really much joy in it for me. Um, I just sort of, I felt for everybody really. I felt for our players, the, the energy that we put into the game. 
kind of left you feeling a bit empty after it and you know obviously the Bradford players were sort of in a similar position to what we'd have been in if we, we would have lost so they're kind of a, a tinge of relief I suppose uh, but not an awful lot of enjoyment. 2021 saw so you leave Trinity and go to York. Danny, how did that move come about? Um, well, obviously I was just ageing and uh, weren't really sort of playing as, as many games as I wanted to. Um, I think Covid were a very fr frustrating time um, for myself sort of playing-wise. Um, I think, you know, normally if you're not playing, you can have a real impact on the team, just being around the place and, you know, being involved in sort of just been involved around the group really and, and Covid sort of took that away if you weren't playing you're sort of not around the group as you, you couldn't be you know as everybody was sort of the same you're kind of locked off a little bit um, so I wasn't really enjoying it too much at the time and um, I spoke to Michael at, at the time and I just said I, I think you know this, this is probably it and me and Michael had always had a really good relationship and I think he just respected my, my view on it um, I think he knew that I'd be honest with him if you know if that time came and it just it just came and I, I didn't want to sort of tinge the enjoyment that I'd had here by ending it in the wrong way um, so yeah I, I was actually going to retire um, and I'd sort of had a little chat with James Webster at the time he were at Featherstone and he sort of said oh I'd like you to come there next year so I kind of had that in the back of my mind um, you know to sort of finish where I'd started um, and that, that didn't sort of turn out to happen. And then uh, Fordy, who I'd played with uh, sort of Fev back in the day, he, he rang me, I met him for a coffee. And it, I just loved his excitement for York and, he, he, you know, his, his sort of ambition for the club. Um, and what I didn't want to do was go somewhere where they're just sort of participating for the, for the sake of it. I wanted to go somewhere where I feel I could sort of add something to. And um, York, York were the right club for that. I loved every minute of it being there. And achieved a Wembley ambition. You played at Wembley with York, although you were beaten by your dear friends from Fed, were you? Yeah, I did, yeah. And it, but it was a great day. I mean, to, to get the opportunity to go back there was um, something that I never really thought I would do. Um, and it was great, you know, to have my wife there and my little girl there as well. Um, was it the 1895 trophy? Yeah, the 1895 Cup, yeah. So... And again, there were a lot of jeopardy around that, really, because ourselves and Feverson had both had loads of sort of positive COVID tests. And I think if there were one more positive, we, the game were going to get cancelled. Um, so it, we ended up getting it on anyway. And yeah, devastating to lose in that game. But my best mate uh, from sort of childhood and all the way through, uh, James Lockwood, I was like in the same form as him at school, best man at his wedding. And obviously, he captained Feverson on the day. So. Whilst we did get beat, it, it was great to see him lift a trophy at Wembley and obviously great to share a field with your best friend there as well. So you have two or three seasons in the Championship. Have you passed any advice now you're on the coaching staff to what our Trinity players can expect in that very tough Championship? Yeah, I think it'll be a, a real surprise to a, to a lot of the boys, uh, not just sort of the physicality and how tough the competition is, but also some of the places that we'll be visiting as well. Um, Obviously, not a lot of people will have played at Batley early on in the year, and that's a, you know that's a challenge in itself. And there's a lot of places like that that have got a hostile environment, and teams are very good at home in the championship and try to make their home ground a bit of a fortress. And there's a fair few of them, uh, you know, the Cumbrian trips are obviously a bit different as well. So it's something that everyone's looking forward to with an excitement. But yeah, they, it's good to have a bit of knowledge on that and uh, a bit of experience as well to pass on. Danny, thanks for sharing those memories with us. Best wishes to you and all the staff, players, coaches and backroom staff for 2024. Thank you.